and we had good friends who were also Bible school students, and they invited us over to see their new house. They had just closed on this house. They were thrilled with it. Three bedrooms, two bath, fireplace. I mean, everything you could want in a beautiful home. With the exception of the front window, because directly outside their front window was the back side of a strip mall. On the front side of the strip mall was a huge, huge, huge red neon sign that blinked on and off all night long that said Satan's Place. I mean, it was huge. Someone had bought the entire strip mall and made private bars, private clubs out of all of these, you know, little stores that used to be there. And so they said to us, we need to close that place down. It's a, it's terrible and, and all kinds of bad things go on there. And besides, we're sick of this Satan's shining in our window all night long. And so we need to go over there and we need to do street witnessing. Every Saturday night, let's go over there and try to close that place down. Just pray in the parking lot. We couldn't go into any of the clubs because they were all private, which basically means you can do anything you want in there. And so... We, we witnessed to the bikers and the hookers and the drug dealers and the pimps. And, you know, it was really funny because when we went over there, we kind of had a us against them mentality. But once we were there, it didn't take very long to realize that the only people with a hard heart were backslidden Christians. <laughs> they were mean. <laughs> Everybody else was really open to the gospel and hungry for God. And, um... So one night while we were there, um, we led a hooker to the Lord. And after she received Christ, we said, you know, you really need to find a different job. This one doesn't really glorify the Savior. And, and God really has something so much better for you than selling your body. And she's like, well, I got three kids. I don't know, I don't know how I'll support them if I don't do this. So we said, our church will support you. Until you find something different, our church will support you. And so she gave us her contact information, and we went off rejoicing. The next morning was church, and we thought we should tell our pastor, who did not even know our names, <laughs> what we had done. <laughs> it was, yeah, <laughs> kind of impetuous. We were young, right? And so uh, we decided after church, after service, we would all find him and tell him, what well, we committed him to, <laughs> the total support of an entire family until she gets on her feet. So, well, uh, during the service, the pastor was having a mission call. And he wanted everybody to come forward and have hands laid on them. And he was going to pray for them. And just say yes if God says yes to mission work. And for some reason, like I had always wanted to be a missionary my whole life. But at that moment, I did not want to be a missionary. I could just see God was going to stick me in some grass hut with a dirt floor in Africa. And I was going to be stuck there forever. I didn't want that. And so I wouldn't go up. I was like, no way. I'm not saying yes to that. That's crazy. And it was like the stinking altar call went on and on and on. So Tom went up and... Dave Harris, our friend who was living with us, went up. And then other people who were there, our friends, went up. And they're all back now after being prayed for and saying, Kim, you need to go up there. You need to just say yes to God. You can trust him. And they're just preaching away at me. So finally, I give in and I go up. And uh, Pastor Sam prays for me. And I fell backwards on the floor. I mean, like a tree cut down. Bam! <laughs> And instantly, I had a vision of children all shrouded in, in uh, like, gray, just wearing these gray. It was like, it looked like gray rags, but it also looked like, like a spirit on them. Yeah, I, I can't explain it, but it was horrible and, and soul-wrenching. And I started crying. I mean, and I was just, I was bawling. Like they had a band playing. It was kind of loud. I was really glad because I was like, ah! and the tears were coming down. I mean, it was odd for church, you know? And so um, I laid there basically until the service was over, just crying. And, um, but then when the service was over, I knew we had to go talk to Pastor Sam. So uh, we got up and all of us went and 
told him <laughs> what we'd done, introduced ourselves. And, and so he was really very nice about it. And he said, you know, we'll definitely support her if, uh, if she's serious about it. You know, if she contacts us, we'll definitely do that. He said, let me pray for you guys. And so we all stood in a circle, right? And, and he takes, we take hands and he says, Lord, bless him in Jesus' name. And the minute he said bless, like all of us phew, fell on the floor, just, just like I had described earlier, just hit the floor. And uh, like a flower opening. <laughs> and I started to cry again. And he said, Sarah, leave her. Joy, come. And I started to laugh. And I laughed hysterically. I mean, I laughed and rolled on the floor and laughed until the entire auditorium was completely clear of all the equipment. They had met in a school and they rented the school until three o'clock in the afternoon, which gave them plenty of time to have the service set up and tear down. Well, they said to my husband, you got to get her out of here because we got to lock the door. We only have this, this room until three and uh, it's almost three. And so he's like, okay. And so Dave Harris was there and, and my husband. And so they, they each put their head under one of my arms, <laughs> drug me out of the sanctuary, staggering like a total drunk. And, and the whole time I'm singing like prophetic songs and songs of worship. And I am like absolutely not aware of where I am at all. I am caught up somewhere else. And so... Uh, my husband gave the keys to the car to Dave, and Dave drove the car as close as he could to the school, and and uh, it was raining out, so Tom let go of me for just a second to, like, open the car door, and the second he let go of me, bam, I fell down, and he, like, caught me just as the tips of my hair fell into this mud puddle, right? So they scooped me into the middle of, uh, we had, like, a bench seat in our car, and um, so Dave is driving, and I'm prophesying and I don't know that I had ever prophesied before in my life I had I had spoken tongues a couple of years before but I don't think I had ever prophesied that I could recall and but that day it was like a prophetic gift opened up to me and uh, it's been about as normal for me to prophesy as it has been for me to breathe I mean just honestly so we were going over to some friends' house who were from Michigan that we'd met at, at school. And they had invited us to lunch after church. They went to the same church we did. So you can imagine the look on their face when Tom and Dave and I showed up. And I'm totally, totally whacked. It is. <laughs> and she's like, uh, put her in on the couch, I guess. <laughs> and so I laid in there. And laughed and prophesied and had this amazing time with the Lord for I don't know hours hours and hours and that was the first time I had ever like laughed in the spirit I guess you'd say or just be been consumed with the joy of the Lord and from that point on uh, anytime the anointing of God got on me I would laugh hysterically <laughs> It was embarrassing as I'll get out. Because, <laughs> you know, most people, when the anointing gets on them, I don't know, they might fall down or they might, you know, shake a little bit or get a little Holy Ghost goose bump or something. But me, I would just like, <laughs> hit the floor and just laugh hysterically. One time, um, one time, a friend had come to my house for some counseling and, I didn't have, I didn't have anything to say to her. I mean, it was a pretty sad situation. And, uh, I just didn't have anything to say. And it seemed like God didn't have anything to say either because I was really trying to hook into the prophetic. I couldn't get anything. And so we spent about an hour talking and I, I was completely unhelpful. And usually, generally, there is a really good spirit of counsel on me. But not that day. And so finally she says to me, can you at least pray for me? I said, yeah, sure. And so I, I reached over and I touched her knee. And I said, Lord, we just love you. 
nothing. I had nothing to pray. I'm not kidding. And I'm a woman of prayer. I mean, I can pray anywhere and about anything. Nothing. So I thought, well, let's try it again. Lord, we just love you. It was like a closed door. I'm not kidding, man. That door was shut. Nothing. So I thought, well, I'll try it again. Lord, we just love you. So finally she says to me, some, friend, some pastor you are, you can't even think of a prayer to pray for me? And she burst out laughing. And I burst out laughing. And just to make a long, long story short, we, she left for 15 hours straight. And I laughed for 12 hours straight. I laughed through my daughter dropping my grandkids off at my house for me to babysit. <laughs> she didn't come in and make sure I was okay. Why would she, right? And so they had a really good time, like jumping over us and laughing with us. And, and then I laughed through my dad coming to pick one of them up to go shopping with my mom. And and my friend, she was rolling around underneath our pool table at the time. And my dad didn't know what to think. <laughs> it was funny. And Tom came home and he fixed dinner for us. And another lady from the church came over and helped us go to the bathroom because we were like totally incapacitated. And you know, the cool thing about that is that uh, that day my friend was totally delivered. You know, you might say, where's the good in laughing? What, what good does that do anybody? But God can do some pretty supernatural things. It's, it kind of works like anesthesia in the natural. You know, they put you under because they're going to do some really painful stuff. And you are not going to be able to bear it. And they need you to hold still for it and accept it. Right? They're going to pull out your tonsils or they're going to cut out your appendix or whatever. It's the same way with joy. You know, God will put you under using his anesthesiologist of joy of, in the Holy Ghost. And he'll do some work in you. He'll reach in there and, he'll, and he needs you to accept it. He needs you to allow him access to your soul. Because 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Right? So God wants your soul prospering. But you're going to have to receive what he has to say. And the easiest way to receive it is while you are like flat out whacked out by the Holy Ghost. One time I was out at Bethel in California, um, Bethel Church in Reading, and they were having a pre-service prayer before a conference that my husband and I were attending. And it was the oddest prayer meeting I'd ever been in. They put on loud worship music, and then everybody walked in a big circle around this room <laughs> I'm not kidding. And so I thought, well, okay, you know, whatever. And so uh, I started walking and praying in tongues and just, you know, looking at everybody. And so there's this little guy uh, come in the opposite direction. Like everybody is walking counterclockwise and he's walking clockwise. And we, well, I had a big name tag on that said Kim. And he said, uh, Kim. That's my daughter's name. I love that name. Be blessed. And he kind of like grabbed me like this beside of my head. And I immediately fell down into the middle of the circle and started laughing. And I spent the entire prayer meeting laughing hysterically in the middle of the circle. And uh, I kept thinking, I need to get up and pray. I need to. It's so funny. I need to get up and be responsible. I'm here for a prayer meeting. I'm not here to just laugh. And, and this is ridiculous. What a waste of time, right? So, um, finally, they shut the music, turned the music down, and they said, you know, uh, the meeting downstairs is going to start pretty soon. If you want to go to it and, you know, leave here, then you're more than welcome to get your stuff around and just wanted to let you know what time it was. So, um, I got up and I, I, uh, I could barely walk, to, to be honest. I mean, I was just so overcome with God, I could just barely walk. And I'm like leaning against the walls and staggered over to my purse. And so I kind of leaned against the wall and got to the door. And um, 
if I turned to the left, I had to go down a set of stairs to get to the conference, and there was no way I could make it down a whole set of stairs.